Hi, today we're going to try and finish the LED ring light project. As you can see, we've got a brand new PCB here assembled at JLC PCB using their updated service that now allows you to have black two layer PCBs assembled. So I think that looks really nice. And as you can see, it's a lot more compact than the original design because the main problem that I was having is that the original PCB was just too big and it was causing some interference, particularly around where the LEDs were mounted. And so I couldn't really come up with a decent 3D printed solution that wasn't sort of quite bulky and huge underneath the microscope. So this is the new design. It's pretty much the same, electrically speaking. I've changed uh, just a couple of bits and also changed the LED driver chip. So we'll look at the schematic in a moment. But really what's taken all the time is the mechanical design. So since the previous video, I've been printing all these different 3D printed designs. As you can see, we've got all different kinds of things here and it just wasn't really working. So what I've ended up with is this much simpler design. The PCB itself sits in the cover like this. And then we've got the top piece, which goes onto the PCB. There's some bosses here which go through onto the PCB with screw holes. And so this top cover just sort of clicks in place and that help is held all together quite nicely then we've got the led mount so the pcb sits in here the heatsink sticks out the back we've got a little hole here for the wires to come out and those go into the plastics like this and then to mount it to the microscope the same four screws that go through here come through the other side and then through onto the microscope mount. And then this whole thing pushes onto the microscope and then there's some grub screws which hold it all in place. So here is the order at JLC PCB. The PCBs themselves were only $12.91 for the 10 PCBs. And the only options that we selected other than the standard stuff is a black PCB. Uh, we've got the standard hot air sod leveled finished. And then I also got them to remove the order number and also confirm the production file so I could check that they were going to cut that center section out from the board. And then the assembly was $67.23, including components for the 10 boards. So that total is about $80 for 10 boards or about $8 per PCB, which I don't think is too bad at all. Now, the only thing that I've changed on the schematic is the driver chip. Uh, which is this part here. Let's look that up on LCSC. So it's the MP24893, which is very similar to the driver that I ordered from DigiKey when I was having all the troubles before. It was actually discontinued at LCSC, but JLC PCB have still got stock of about two and a half thousand of them. So I was able to use that part, and we know that we had decent results with a very similar part from the same manufacturer previously. So hopefully everything should just work nicely. The only other thing I changed is the location of this electrolytic capacitor. Previously, it was on the supply side. I've moved it to the switched side now. That does mean that this switch is going to see quite a high peak current when you first turn it on to charge up this capacitor. But it should mean that the voltage rail slews up a little bit slower and reduces the chances of any spikes on V-in as a result of also having these very low impedance ceramic capacitors on that line. So the way these little LED assemblies work is in the LED holder, we've got the hole obviously for the lens. Then there's this little slot, which you can just about see going all the way through to the bottom edge here. So with the wire soldered onto the LED side, you poke the wires through the hole, then push the lens through the hole here. And you can see how it's been done on this one here. So we've got the wires coming through up underneath the PCB and soldered through on that side. And then you put the little cover on here over the heat sink and that holds everything together. And then there's a self-tapping screw, one in each corner that goes through into the 3D printed material. The size there is 2.9 by 6.5 millimeters. So that's the LEDs fitted into the LED mounts with the four self-tapping screws. And I printed this in such a way that the holes that we've got are the perfect size for these self-tapping screws. So it's not like we're cutting away material unnecessarily. These screw in quite nicely. So that's four of those done. Um, those need to be routed within the chassis once we get there. The next part is to put in the through hole parts that JLC PCB couldn't assemble onto the board. So we've got the DC jack from Cliff components. 
and that fits in nicely. We've got the slide switch as well and again that's the same as before so no problem there. Now I did end up changing the potentiometer. Here we've got the old board, the one that I uh, disassembled slightly in an earlier video. So this was ended up being quite a bulky potentiometer and it kept getting in the way of all of the mounts for holding these in place. I just kept finding it was getting in the way. It also added quite a lot of height to the PCB. It was the tallest component by a long way. So this one is actually the other part that I had in the original video. I selected two potentiometers but only placed one. Hopefully this should sit in there nicely. Quite satisfyingly it should click as well because of the way it's designed. And there we go, it's in there nicely. And as you can see it's not much higher than the electrolytic capacitor. I did end up having to thin a bit of area here to sit above that potentiometer um, but it doesn't really cause any problem obviously with the rigidity of this and then this should slide through the hole, the mounted hole and should still be able to line up with the four screw holes which it seems to nicely so that seems to work well so I'm just going to solder those parts up now. Right so that's all of those components soldered on. I also soldered on the wires for the LEDs. The next part is to mount the LED holders onto the top cover. Now the way that I've designed these little LED holders is there's a little slot at each side and that is designed to take an M3 nut. So you push it in, uh, it takes a little bit of force so it stays in there quite nicely but you can see it fits in there. Push it in and then when you put your screw in from the side the nut is automatically held for you so you just push that in, start screwing it in and it holds it in place and these screws are going to go through here into the LED holder. Now annoyingly I can't find my pan head screws so we're going to have to use these countersink screws instead. I might swap them out when I do come across them but I had a lab tidy the other day and that was a mistake. Anyway let's try and get all of these onto here as well. So that's the LEDs mounted onto the plate. You do need to adjust the screw tension just enough so that you can still adjust these but that they're not flopping around all over the place. Obviously if you're only ever going to use the ring light in one location you can probably tighten these up and because of the angle of these, I think it was 60 degrees for this lens, we should be able to get decent dispersion of light anyway in that area. Next thing to do is to get the PCB in here and then just route the cables nice and neatly. And there we go, that's it fully assembled and it does feel really quite robust. There are quite a few parts to the design. Now, some of my earlier designs were sort of trying to fit everything all into one a little bit more. This is one of them. The problem is that it was taking quite a long time to print with some of the designs because we had to cut away lots of material on the inside and I think by having multiple parts we can print them actually quite a lot quicker. So for example the, the plate that the LEDs mount onto that is printed with this surface on the bed of the printer so this prints really quickly. Then we have the, uh, the part that actually houses the PCB. Once again this part sits on the bed and there's no overhanging part so again this prints really quite quickly. Um, the mount onto the microscope, the bed on here onto a flat surface and then again just a vertical print so this only takes a couple of hours and then the LED mounts themselves. You can actually print all of these at once on the same bed, um, you just have that side facing down so they've all got a nice flat face which means that it's a lot easier to print. Just in case anyone's interested, for the 3D prints I've primarily been using the Ender 3 version 2 which is actually a really nice printer. All you have to do is pretty much set it up once and then it just works every time. There's no faffing around, it just seems to work really well for me. I've recently just got the Creality box which allows you to control it uh, through the cloud so you can check the progress of your print from your mobile phone. We'll have a look at this in a future video. But this has been a really good printer and actually prints really nicely. I've just recently been sent the Gitech A20M which is a dual filament printer and this is actually a little bit quicker than the Ender but it's also quite a bit louder and the last print went completely wrong. I've never had a print go wrong on the Ender V3. This one um, it was looks like the retraction didn't work properly. Also I can't get this print off the base plate um, so I do need to get a glass base plate for this one to facilitate the removal of it but the 
the little uh, BL Touch leveling sensor seems to work quite well. And the CR10S Pro, unfortunately, doesn't really get used because there's a few problems with it. And the dual lead screw design on the Z-axis, for me, just doesn't work very well. I know there's some um, mods and all that kind of stuff, but I haven't got time to play around with it at the moment. So it ends up getting mainly printed on the Ender V3. Uh, the Ender 3 and the Gitech A20M, but I'll put a link to these in the description if you do want to support the channel and use one of the affiliate links. Now if we think where we've come from, this is an original ring light that comes with one of the standard microscopes and it's just a whole load of 3mm LEDs, uh, pretty much all wired in parallel, so there's current sharing but the LEDs aren't very well matched so sometimes you'll see some of them are a little bit brighter than others, consequently quite a few of them do tend to burn out and the main problem that I was finding with this is that you have the lens poking through and because the LEDs are so close to the lens you get reflections vertically straight up into the lens and sometimes you can't capture things very well on the camera. It doesn't look too bad by eye. So if you recall from my first video on this, this was the first sort of proof, proof of concept, a very simple design, just moving the LEDs away from the lens on the microscope so that we didn't get quite so many reflections. Also trying out higher power LEDs rather than having all of these. And this worked actually really quite well. Very simple design and the microscope mount was something that I was going to transfer over to this PCB. This is the one that you're probably all familiar with where I had some of the problems with the drivers. I was simply going to put this microscope mount through this PCB, have four of these LED boards and solder them with quite solid wires and nothing else. It would just simply be a bare PCB and then obviously with the LEDs pretty much at a fixed angle. It depended on how thick the wires were that you used to attach it. But I was just going to use solid wire and pretty much have them solid. So we've come quite a long way since then. Obviously you don't have to build a entire 3D printed case but I will include all of the files on my website. Now one thing we haven't done obviously is actually test whether this works and I actually haven't tested this at, at all. I'm putting faith in that I've designed the schematic correctly. So let's see what happens. Let me just find a cable. Right there we go. I've got one that's a 24 volt power supply. And I didn't put a hole for the power LED. That was a bit of an oversight but I pretty much had enough with uh, designing the chassis for this. I just wanted it done. Um, that's partly where that clear version came from. I was thinking about just having it all clear, but since the microscope's black, I decided to have it black. So let's turn it on and see what happens. And there we go. That seems to be working nicely. We do have our brightness adjustment all the way down to minimum and all the way up to maximum. That's drawing 20 watts, so each LED is dissipating 5 watts each. And that really is quite nice and bright. So what we're going to do now is compare the two. So we'll put this on the microscope, have a look at what the image quality looks like, and then see if we can see any difference by changing it to my high power LED light. So here we can see the original ring light mounted onto the Amscope microscope. And then that is looking down at the LED clock PCB. And so what I'm seeing is quite a bit of reflection in the region here because the light is bouncing directly off the PCB and back into the camera lens. And then also it's a little bit dim around the edges. It's certainly not too bad, but the illumination isn't that great. The IMX290 camera is working quite hard at the noise reduction to try and give us a nice clear image. So this is just at 3.5 times zoom. As you zoom in, you do lose quite a bit of brightness. But what I want to do is try and swap out the ring light and keep everything exactly in place. And now I think the image looks quite a lot different. We're not seeing any of those horrible reflections up here and everything looks really quite flat and even across the entire image. That's with the LEDs at about half brightness. I've not really noticed any improvement if we increase the brightness further. The camera just seems to compensate for it at that point. But about half brightness, that seems to be quite a decent compromise between being blinded when you're looking at the PCB and having a really nice image quality. And then here is the Mega Illuminator lighting up the clock PCB once again. I sometimes find that black PCBs can be a little bit tricky to film sometimes, so we're looking at its own PCB 
and the black looks really quite nice and matte here and I think you're able to see everything quite clearly. Let's have a look at what it looks like with the original ring light. And there we go, with the original ring light, to me that looks pretty terrible. Obviously you can see what you're doing, but particularly for filming that doesn't look anywhere near as aesthetically pleasing. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. Just before we finish, I thought we'd just zoom in at maximum zoom and just see how the brightness and the image quality changes. So I'll just focus it up. So this is at 22.5 times zoom, which is maximum with the 0.5 times Barlow lens. It certainly doesn't look too bad, but it's starting to look a little bit dim through the eyepieces. Let's swap it out for the new ring light once again. I think I just nudged the microscope slightly, a little bit tricky at these high zooms, but certainly to me that looks infinitely better. So I'm really quite pleased with how this is working. So I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. It's been quite a lot more work than I'd hoped to get to this point, primarily because I ended up designing a chassis for it. The original PCB with the LEDs hanging off it would have been nice and quick to do and obviously would have been functional but I think I wanted something that looked a little bit nicer and also gave me a little bit of practice once again with the 3D tools. It's been quite a while since I've used some of those and also got some use out of the 3D printers. So this design addresses quite a few issues. This was the design that I've been using for quite a long time now and this is the one that was sort of an all-in-one that I had to cut away loads of material and also it did have the problem that the heat could get out from the heat sinks but there wasn't really a very easy airflow path in so the LEDs were getting a little bit warm. This one has the heat sinks exposed so we should get quite a bit more heat dissipation but in the end I've never really needed to drive it anywhere near full current. Uh, this one's set to one amp pretty much full current. Half an amp seems to do just as well for the LEDs and the camera that I've got. So what I'm going to do is put all of the files on my website so you can visit the link up here and you can download all of the Gerber files and all of the uh, CAD files so that you can build your own. What I do intend to do is to get some of these PCBs and some of the LED boards out to subscribers. So some of them will go to my Patreon supporters and then some of them probably to my normal subscribers. I do have to work out the logistics and I need to find some ways of getting these out. I need to find some nice boxes to ship them in that aren't going to get these broken. So bear with me while I work all that out uh, and then I'll work out how we distribute them. It will probably just be that you need to pay for postage. You obviously won't need to pay for the PCBs. They are provided to me by JLC PCB. So hopefully you found the video useful and interesting. It's been a long time getting to this point but I think all of my future videos where we use the microscope are now going to be using this nice new microscope light. So if you've got any thoughts or comments, stick them in the comments section down below. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are keeping me going and paying the bills for various import duty and all that kind of stuff which really adds up. So a big thank you to everyone and until next time, thanks for watching.